Hi everyone, hello allemaal, morgen bong, ke wam kele kele, welkom and welcome to this very brief introduction to ratios. Now let's just remind ourselves what a ratio is. So if I say that at our university there are 100 students for every professor or 100 students per professor, we could write that as a ratio between students, I'm going to use the hash to mean number, number of students to professors and from what I said we could write the ratio as 100 students is to one professor. So we can say 100 is to one, 100 students for every one professor or we could say 100 students per professor. So that's a basic ratio. So we find ratios everywhere, particularly in scientific subjects, but also in everyday life. So let's start with an everyday example. You go to the farmer's market to buy olive oil. When you arrive, you realize that you only have 20 rand in your pocket. The assistant sells you 0.18 liters of olive oil for 20 rand. You plan next week to buy P liters of olive oil. To figure out how much this will cost in rand, which formula should you use? Pause the video now. Right, welcome back. So we're not going to give you the answer just yet. And remember, more important than the correct answer is the method that you used to get to the correct answer. So I'm going to introduce you to a method, very powerful method to work with ratios called the ratio table. So here's another example, a more mathematical example. Stellenbosch has a population of about 20,000 people in an area of about 10 square kilometers. Set up a ratio table containing this information. So the first step of a ratio table is to consider which are the two physical quantities that you are comparing or that you're creating a relationship between. So in this question, we are creating a relationship between the number of people in Stellenbosch and the area. And I'm going to pop the units in here as well. We're dealing with square kilometers. And from the information that we're given, we can insert that information directly into a ratio table that has as its columns the two physical quantities that we're interested in. And we're told that there are 20,000 people in an area of 10 square kilometers. This is how information is represented in a ratio table. Now, if we go back to our question, we'll see that it asks us for how many people we would find in one square kilometer. So we're looking for the number of people in one square kilometer. How do we get from 10 to one? Hopefully you all agree, we divide by 10. And the golden rule of the ratio table is what you do to the right hand side, you do to the left hand side. So we divide the left hand side by 10 and we land up with an answer of 2,000 people in one square kilometer or 2,000 people for every square kilometer or 2,000 people per square kilometer. How would you represent this graphically or as a sketch? Well, if we had a square kilometer, and a square kilometer, as we all know, is one kilometer by one kilometer. And if you were in Stellenbosch, if you were to start from the BP McDonald's in Merriman Lahn, and you were to walk all the way to the circle at the top of Merriman Lahn, and you were to walk from the circle to Kutzenberg, and then you were to walk from Kutzenberg to Paul Roos, and then you would walk from Paul Ross back to the BP, you would have walked out an area of about one square kilometer. And what this information tells us is that if we had 10 of these square kilometers, that would be the approximate area of the Greater Stellenbosch. Now it's time for you to have a go with the ratio table. At a party, a group of 60 students are sharing n large pizzas. Set up a ratio table containing this information. Pause the video now. 
So hopefully you should all have identified the two physical quantities that we're dealing with as students or number of students and pizzas or number of pizzas. And the information that you're given can be written in this ratio table as 60 is to n, 60 students for every n pizzas. The next question is, assuming the students share the pizza evenly, how can you figure out the average number of students a single pizza should feed? Pause now. So the answer you were looking for was divide 60 by n. And as always, it's not the answer, but the method that is more important. So let's make sure that we understand that in order to get there, we wanted to find the number of students for one pizza. So on the right hand side, we divided by n. And on the left hand side, we divided by n to get 60 over n students for one pizza. Let's try another slightly more complicated example. Stellenbosch has a population of about 20,000 people in an area of about 10 square kilometers. Approximately how many people would we find in seven square kilometers? So as before, the first step in our ratio table is to identify the quantities that we're concerned with. And once again, we're concerned with the number of people and the area. Pop my units in here again, square kilometers. And the information as before is given is that there are 20,000 people in 10 square kilometers. Now the question asks us for how many people we will find in seven square kilometers. So we wanna find the number of people in seven square kilometers. Now it's not clear to me how I get from 10 to seven. Remember in the ratio table, you can never add or subtract. You can only multiply and divide. So I'm gonna introduce you to a method that I call the take it to one method. The take it, the take it to one method or the Tito method in order to solve these types of problems. So instead of trying to go directly to seven, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to take this 10 to one and then I'm going to take it to seven. So we all know how to get from 10 to one. Hopefully you'll agree that in order to get from 10 to one, we divide by 10. What we do to the right-hand side, we do to the left-hand side. And as before, we find that there are 2,000 people per square kilometer. And hopefully you'll all agree that in order to get from one to seven, we have to multiply by seven, what we do to the right, or we do to the left, and we land up with 14,000 people, 14,000 people in seven square kilometers using the take it to one method. Here's an example you can try with the take it to one method. Once again, you're at the same party with 60 students, which who are sharing n large pizzas. Assuming the students share the pizzas evenly, how can you figure out the number of pizzas required for 11 students? Begin by setting up that ratio table with the two physical quantities and then use the take it to one method to find the answer. Pause now. Welcome back. You should have found that the correct answer was A, 11 times 10 over 60. And as always, it's not the correct answer, but the method that we use to get there that's more important so let's give this a go together. So here we are looking at the number of students and pizzas in our ratio table. We begin with the information that there are 60 students for n pizzas. And we are asked to calculate the number of pizzas for 11 students. I'm not sure how I'm gonna get from 60 to 11. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 60 to one. I'm gonna use the take it to one method. What I do to the left, I do to the right. I divide by 60 and I get N over 60. In order to get from one to 11, I simply multiply by 11. What I do to the left, I do to the right. And we come out with N multiplied by 11 divided by 60, which was option A. I think we're about ready to try that olive oil problem again. So let's give that a go. Pause the video now. So you should have found that the answer was D, 
20 times P divided by 0.18. Now there's another important concept that I want to introduce to you while we're dealing with the ratio table, and that is that it really helps us understand this word per. The reason I like the take it to one method is because whenever you see a one in your ratio table, you know that you can use the word per. For example, in the work that we did earlier, this line over here, where there is a one on the left hand side, we could write the information in that line as n over 60 pizzas per student. And similarly, in other examples, we can write 60 over n students per pizza, where we have a 1 in the right-hand column. The reason we're so interested in the word per is because this is the word that's used in a lot of units. For example, if we take a concept like density and we say that a substance has a density of 5 kilograms per meter cubed, which you can also write as 5 kilograms per meter cubed, we can now understand this relationship as a ratio between two physical quantities of mass and volume. Here's a question for us. A substance has a density of 5 kilograms per meter cubed. 1. Set up a ratio table to represent this information. NB, what are the two physical quantities in your columns? Two, can you represent this information in a, in a rough sketch? And three, use the ratio table and the take it to one method to calculate the volume of six kilograms of the substance. So here, in terms of representing this information in a ratio table, first of all, we need to identify the two physical quantities, which is going to be mass, and I'll put in my units and volume. And I'll put in my units of cubic meters. Now the information that I'm given is that there are five kilograms per cubic meter. That means that five kilograms is to one cubic meter. That is how we represent that information in the ratio table. I'm then asked to represent this graphically. For me, the easiest way to understand this is this one represents a cube of side one by one by one. This is one cubic meter, and if we were to take one cubic meter of this particular substance and we were to weigh it, we'd find that it had a mass of five kilograms. The question then asks us to calculate the volume occupied by six kilograms of the substance, and I'm gonna use the good old take it to one method. In order to get from five to six, I'm first going to take that five to one. So I find that I have one over five meters cubed per kilogram. For every one kilogram of the substance, it'll take up a volume of one over five, or 0.2 cubic meters. And then I multiply the left-hand side by six and the right-hand side by six to find that six kilograms of the substance will take up six over five cubic meters. Now I know that you could have used the formula, density is equal to mass divided by volume, but we don't always have a formula available for more complicated units or units that uh, you've just been introduced to, which I'll show you in a moment. But first, let's have a look at a graphical representation of this on a slide. So here you can see our cube, once again, of one meter by one meter by one meter. Uh, and if we were to weigh that cube for this particular substance, we'd find that it would weigh five kilograms. In the ratio table, we represent that as 5 is to 1. Uh, and we can say that's 5 kilograms per 1 cubic meter, 5 kilograms per cubic meter, 5 kilograms is to 1 cubic meter, or even 5 kilograms in 1 cubic meter. And hopefully you'd agree that if we were to ask to find the mass of 4 cubic meters, we could graphically represent that as 4 of those cubes whose mass we would add up to 20 
kilograms. So here's an example for you to try in your classroom with unfamiliar units. We're dealing with the concept of charge density and the question asks us, a substance has a charge density of 5 coulombs per cubic meter. Set up a ratio table to represent this information. Importantly, what are the two physical quantities in your columns? Can you represent this information in a rough sketch? And use a ratio table to calculate the charge of three cubic meters of the substance. Pause now. Right, welcome back. So we're dealing with a concept that we haven't come across before, that's charge density. Uh, and in terms of the units, we're given that the substance has five coulombs per cubic meter. We can immediately see that this is a ratio between charge, that's the one physical quantity we're interested in, and volume. I'm just going to squeeze in the units for charge over here to be thorough. So here is our ratio table. Between charge and volume, our information that we're given we can represent in the ratio table as 5 coulombs for every 1 cubic meter, or 5 coulombs per cubic meter. How would we represent this graphically? In the exact same way as we did for the mass density, except now we have a cubic meter of 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter of this particular substance. But instead of weighing it, we can measure the charge that it has, right? So in terms of the atomic structure, we are missing electrons such that there's a positive charge of the substance of 5 coulombs. That would be my graphical representation of 5 coulombs for 1 cubic meter of the substance. We are then asked to calculate the charge for 3 cubic meters. We don't even need to take the take it to what you use a take it to 1 method. We can simply multiply both sides by 3 and we find that we have a charge of 15 coulombs to 3 cubic meters. We didn't need a formula for charge density. We could simply work from the fact that we were given these units and insert this information into a ratio table. And here's one slide which represents all that information graphically as well. Here's an example for you to try in class with new units once again. A cylinder has a linear mass density of 5 kilograms per meter. Set up a ratio table to represent this information. Once again, the important thing is what are the two physical quantities in your columns? Represent this information in a rough sketch and use your ratio table and the take it to one method to calculate the length of the cylinder if its mass is 12 kilograms. Pause now. Right, welcome back. So we were given the information that a linear density was 5 kilograms per meter. And from what we've been saying, we can immediately say this is a relationship between mass on the left-hand side in kilograms and length on the right-hand side in meters. Our ratio table is going to set up a relationship between these two physical quantities and our starting point is to say that there are five kilograms for every one meter. Now what could this mean? For a cylinder of some substance, what this means is that for every one meter of this cylinder, if we were to take one meter of this cylinder and weigh that meter, we would find that this meter weighs five kilograms. Five kilograms for every one meter. If we were to take another meter, we would find that also weighed five kilograms. Five kilograms per one meter. We're then asked to calculate the length if the cylinder happened to weigh 12 kilograms. Once again, I don't know how to get from 5 to 12. I'm going to use the take it to 1 method. So I'm going to divide by 5, divide by 5. This is an interesting quantity over here. 
That's 1 over 5 or 0.2 meters for every kilogram. 0.2 meters per kilogram for this particular cylinder. And here I'm going to multiply by 12 and multiply by 12. And I find that I have 12 over 5 meters uh, or 2.2 meters for 12 kilograms worth of this cylinder. So let's go over that one more time on the slides. So we have a cylinder, linear mass density we write as mu, the Greek letter mu, 5 kilograms per meter. And that means that for every meter of the cylinder, uh, every meter of the cylinder weighs 5 kilograms. We can represent that in a ratio table uh, as follows. Um, and once again, every meter we take of the cylinder will weigh five kilograms. So as you can see the ratio table can be applied to any quantity that is in a ratio form and it's particularly helpful for units that we haven't come across yet or that units are particularly that are particularly difficult to work with. So I want to give you one final very general and perhaps quite amusing example is that if you are told that you have four thingies per dungus you can immediately write this information in a ratio table where on the left hand side you are comparing thingies and you're creating a relationship between thingies and dunguses. And this information you can put in your ratio table as 4 is to 1. So whatever your dungus is, it could be a square kilometer like we dealt with in Stellenbosch. It could be a cubic meter. It could be one meter. It could be uh, milliseconds. It could be cubic centimeters. Whatever unit you have here, you have four of these thingies per dungus four thingies per dungus and you can use this for any units that you might come across that you don't fully understand yet. Thanks very much for watching. We hope that helped.